As Russian President Vladimir Putin prepares for his high-profile visit to New Delhi on December 4-5, 2025, Moscow is gearing up to push one of its most ambitious defense proposals in recent years, the Sukhoi Su-57 fifth-generation stealth fighter for the Indian Air Force. The Kremlin has openly projected this aircraft as the best plane in the world, and officials have hinted that the upcoming summit with Prime Minister Narendra Modi will heavily focus on sealing deeper defense cooperation while resisting interference from rival nations. Ahead of the visit, Kremlin Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov confirmed that the Su-57E offer will be at the top of the agenda. Alongside talks for additional S-400 air defense systems, he stressed that Russia is committed to strengthening the India-Russia partnership without allowing external forces to influence or disrupt the negotiations. Peskov's remarks were clearly directed at Western nations that have been trying to pressure India over its close defence and energy relations with Moscow amid the ongoing Ukraine conflict. This renewed proposal revives a partnership that once existed under the now-closed fifth-generation fighter aircraft project, from which India withdrew in 2018 due to concerns over stealth capability timelines, and cost. Since then, Russia has inducted 22 Su-57 fighters into service and plans to expand to 76 aircraft by 2028. The export-oriented Su-57E variant has also been showcased at major global defense events, including Aero India 2025 and the Dubai Airshow, where it displayed its internal weapon bays loaded with advanced next-generation munitions. The offer that Russia is placing on the table goes far beyond a simple purchase. Rosa Boronik Spornet is proposing a comprehensive industrial partnership in which up to 114 Su-57E fighters could be co-produced in India. This would fit neatly into the Indian Air Force's long-delayed multi-role fighter aircraft procurement plan. According to the proposal, initial deliveries of 20 to 30 jets would be supplied directly from Russia to fill immediate capability gaps, while the remaining aircraft would be assembled in India at HAL's Nashik facility, the same site responsible for producing more than 270 Su-30 MKI fighters since 2004. What sets this offer apart is the unprecedented level of technology transfer. Russia is promising up to 70 to 80 percent indigenous content by the end of the production cycle, along with access to full source codes for avionics, flight control systems, and weapons integration. This would allow Indian weapons and systems, like the Atom AESA radar, Astra BVR missiles, Rudram anti radiation missiles, and even future BrahMos air launched variants, to be fully integrated without foreign restrictions. Rostik CEO Sergei Chemezov has described this proposal as a pathway to AMC ionization, meaning that the technologies mastered through Su 57E production could directly accelerate the development of India's own AMC A fifth generation fighter. This includes know how in stealth shaping, composite materials, signature reduction coatings, and future upgrades to the Isdela 30 engine. Russian officials have also signaled that these technology transfer terms can be further negotiated, with the potential for joint ventures that could eventually localize nearly all subsystems inside India. This stands in sharp contrast to offers from France or the United States, where technology transfer remains limited, and the integration of Indian weapons into platforms like Rafale or F-21 often comes with additional financial and political complications, the timing of Russia's offer is crucial. The Indian Air Force is currently operating at around 30 squadrons, well below the sanctioned strength of 42 squadrons required for a credible two-front capability against China and Pakistan. The Su-57E, with its combination of stealth, supercruise performance, extreme maneuverability, sensor fusion, and long-range strike capability, is being projected as a potential game-changer for India. Defense analysts estimate that the entire program, including production, spares, offsets, and support, could be worth between $15 to $20 billion. For Russia, this would significantly support its wartime economy, while for India, it would represent a major leap towards self-reliance under Made in India vision. However, significant challenges remain. The United States has already threatened Kutsar sanctions over India's earlier S-400 purchase, and Washington recently imposed tariffs on Indian refiners processing Russian crude, signaling that friction could intensify if India chooses the Su-57E. 
Peskov dismissed these measures as illegal and called for expanding rupee-ruble trade mechanisms to protect India-Russia transactions from Western financial systems. He also acknowledged the trade imbalance between the two countries. India's imports from Russia reached $65 billion in financial year 2025, while exports remain small, though Russia is working to increase agricultural and fertilizer imports to help narrow the gap. Putin's upcoming visit also covers a wide spectrum of strategic cooperation, the Chennai-Vladivostok Maritime Corridor, the leasing of additional nuclear submarines, expansion of BrahMos exports, and energy partnerships. While no final Su-57E contract is expected to be signed during the trip, officials on both sides indicate that the groundwork being laid now could lead to formal agreements by mid-2026. If that happens, the Su-57E program could become one of the largest and most transformative defence deals in India's history, further cementing Russia as an indispensable partner at a time when global geopolitics is rapidly shifting toward multipolar competition.